My name is David Bradley and I am the Doctor. No, no. I am the Doctor. <laughs> Adventure in Space and Time came about when um, Mark Gatiss approached me at an event in London and told me he'd written something for the 50th anniversary of the, uh, the start of Doctor Who. Mark Gatiss, I think, had tried to get it actually in for the 40th, but hadn't managed to get it through, so it'd been a real passion project. I didn't even need to say, oh, can you send me a script or can we talk about it? I just said yes before he changed his mind. And uh, and that was it. And so to be able to go back into that world and recreate it so um, exactly. And so together we retold, no, we told the story of how it all started. Walking onto the set where the interior of the TARDIS was, was, I mean, I watched Doctor Who growing up, of course I did, but um, I, I couldn't call myself an expert. But even I got goosebumps and a shiver going up my spine because it, it, was, it was exactly as you saw in all of those clips and all those YouTube clips that we did for research. After playing this, uh, the part of this actor, getting this great role that was to change his life, uh, it changed mine in a way because it led to, um, as I said, the Christmas episode to follow and I, I felt I'd become part of the, uh, the Doctor Who family. It was very special and I think was a... Um, uh, a great tribute to the achievement of Verity Lambert and William Hartnell um, and everybody who, who made it happen. So, no, it was, an, it was an extraordinary experience. The feedback I got from Adventure in Space and Time, now if uh, I, I, I meet fans who say, well, um, I wasn't old enough to see the very first Doctor. My first Doctor was Tom Baker or David Tennant or whatever, depending on their age. And, but they've gone back and looked at the, the original recordings and, um, as I say, the feedback I've had for playing him was very, very positive. So it was one of the best jobs I've ever had. It was a pleasure to, uh, to be asked to do the Big Finish audio recordings because it was a pleasure to come back to playing this character. But the fact that the characters, um, the characters within characters have been given free reign on audio is absolutely fantastic. And it's, it feels absolutely um, in keeping with the spirit of the originals. Playing Susan with Big Finish is really different because um, the focus for me more, I think, when I was in an adventure in space and time was on getting Carol right, um, being true to her and honouring her um, her as an actor. And she's, you know, she she's uh, was a very iconic um, person of that time, actress of that time. And with Susan, these are just new adventures. So I'm getting to really explore how I play Susan. Um, with obviously being uh, respectful to Carol um, and having the essence of that, uh, but um, putting my own spin on it, I suppose. To be honest, when we first started uh, three, four years ago, I thought, these scripts are so good. They must be rediscovered original scripts. I didn't know that they'd been especially written for for this uh, series not just in the way they're they're written but also in the the nature of the way that we record them feels very much um in in, in the spirit so no it's, it's been an absolute joy to be able to keep on revisiting it's really exciting doing these audios because i get to go on um, my own adventures with my team. Um, I've got my grandfather, my doctor, and then I've got my two other companions. Um, and I get to do what all the other companions and actors have done in all these series. Um, uh, but these are our own and our own thing. So it feels really special. And to have been born out of, um, you know, an adventure in space and time, I never thought that I'd still be doing this now. So every year we meet up here at the Sound House with Jamie, Claudia, and Gemma, and uh, get to tell these amazing stories. 
I was um, at an event not that long ago, and um, it was a Doctor Who convention, and an audience member said, if you could go back to any, anywhere in time, anywhere in history, if you, if you could have the power of time travel, where would you go back to? And I said, well, for me, because I spent so many years with the Royal Shakespeare Company and most, a lot, most of my life has been, and my career has been based on the total love of Shakespeare and, and I've spent many years um, performing in quite a lot of his plays. I thought, wouldn't it be great to go back to the Globe Theatre in the 1590s and, and see a performance of one of his plays, see the great Richard Burbage or one of the, uh, or, or see King Lear or Hamlet or um, on the first night of one of these plays, just to be part of that audience and see what it was like. And lo and behold, here we are this year, and there's one of the stories is based on just that. To go back into some of the historical stories that, that, that we do as well, um, William Shakespeare is involved, Tsar Nicholas is involved, and that, that's, that's great too because it's, um, you know, there's a, something true to the kind of Rethian ethic of going, of, it should educate as well as, as, well as entertain. And um, I think there is, there is a lot of that. And so to go back and actually live amongst historical figures is a, is a great joy. It's a, it's, a real, it's a real privilege and just great fun to do. And very cheeky, it always feels slightly irreverent as well. So no, it's great fun. One kind of knew some of these stories, but the, the script has got a real ring of authenticity about it, coupled with the fact that he just, uh, just happens to be a TARDIS in the middle of it. <laughs> The story we're doing today is about the Daleks, so it's very exciting because um, because it's the Daleks. <laughs> Anybody who's ever watched any episode of Doctor Who wants to do something with the Daleks. The first time I encountered one on set, it brought back that old little prickle on the back of the neck when I remember them when I was younger. And, and they, the fact that they couldn't go upstairs, uh, it didn't matter. They were still terrifying. Acting opposite a Dalek is... Um, is brilliant. I mean, it's like no other. Nick does such a brilliant job. Um, uh, I've never heard an actor quite, uh, quite get the perfection of the tone that he gets. And um, so it's it's really fun to see it um, live and work against it. When you have a Dalek in a scene with you, you have that sound, and that is abs that's as iconic as as the theme tune and the sound of the TARDIS departing and arriving. Um, so to have that sound ringing in your ears, it, it absolutely sends a, a kind of physical jolt through your body, and it's um, that's very very exciting. Who wouldn't be excited by working with the Daleks? And to meet the guy inside um, uh, operating the Dalek, it was it was funny and very touching, and um, it just t took me back to to being young and terrified. Yeah. 